Florida is bracing for impact with torrential rain, catastrophic storm surge, and even tornado threats. Our Jason Allen is live in Tampa, braving the elements. Jason, what can the you tell us? The core of this storm, it's 100 miles to the south of where we are. That's where it came across onto the shore of Florida. But even here, there are wind gusts right now between 60 and 70 miles per hour. We're starting to hear it whistle around the tops of the buildings. This is a huge storm with the impact stretching all the way from the northern border of Florida down through the Florida Keys. Hurricane Ian has arrived on U.S. shores, a powerful, lumbering storm that's expected to batter millions in Florida. Oh! Hurricane hunters flying directly into Ian felt the storm's power, and satellite imagery shows lightning in the eyewall as Ian approached. Officials are warning of dangerous flooding and life-threatening storm surge. Some place is going to get two feet of rain it's moving that slow. Flooding began on these streets in Naples while Ian was still offshore, and downed power lines sparked this fire. <laughs> Residents in the highest risk areas were warned. If they hadn't gotten out by this morning, it was too late. I urge Floridians who have made the decision to shelter in place, to stay indoors, and stay off the roads. But the curious came out to Tampa Bay earlier as water receded from the shoreline. It's been pushing water out of the bay. This is a swimming area usually, and right now you can walk on it. It's like the one in a lifetime thing. These Michigan residents have never experienced a hurricane. We see if we can get a, a good glimpse of anything while we're here. But there is serious business ahead as Ian bears down. FEMA has hundreds of boots on the ground and has pre-positioned food and water supplies. Florida's governor is already forecasting a long recovery. This is not just a 48-hour ordeal. This is going to be something that is going to be there for days and weeks and months. Ian is expected to move across central Florida and exit Daytona Beach sometime tomorrow. We have seen some local emergency crews moving throughout the city, responding to things when and where they can. Other crews, uh, rescue crews who have come in from all over the southeast U.S., many of them are staging right now. They are waiting for the worst of this storm to move out before they go into neighborhoods where people undoubtedly will need some help. Back to you. Uh, Jason, before we let you go, uh, we know that Florida law, uh, they can't mandate people to leave, but there were evacuation orders in place. Uh, do you think a lot of people heeded that advice? I do, and I would say it's split probably half and half. There were a lot of people yesterday who were getting out of the city, but you know, we talked to a lot of people who wanted to stay in their homes. They've been through it before. And at the same time, there are a lot of people who evacuated even here to where we are. So just moving in a few miles from those lowest lying areas and getting to a hotel that was just a few feet higher, that in itself is an evacuation. And even here, the you know, we haven't lost power. It's good infrastructure, so things are holding tight in the downtown area. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way. Jason, fantastic reporting. Thank you so much for setting the scene for us out there. You stay safe. Well, it's not only the size and strength of Ian that's posing a threat to Florida right now. It's really the speed of the storm. The slower it moves, the longer the area is battered by those sustained hurricane force winds. First Alert meteorologist Aaron Moran has been tracking Ian and joins us now with a look. Aaron. Well, we're taking a look from the Tampa radar right now. So this is just one radar a little farther to the north from the eye of this storm. But zooming on in right now, the storm did make landfall a couple of hours ago. Some of the most significant winds at the moment are ongoing from Northport. You can see 75 there to Arcadia. This is part of the eye wall right now, but some of the Florida wind gusts, that, the southwest Florida wind gusts that we have seen, uh, these are 125 to 126 mile an hour wind gusts reported on Captiva Island, on Punta Gorda, uh, Fort Myers, the airport there, 83 mile an hour wind gusts, uh, Bonita Springs, 80 miles an hour, and we're still going on at this point. The eye of that storm stretches about 15 to 20 miles in diameter. We still have a category four hurricane right now, about five miles to the east of Punta Gorda. It has weakened some. That's some good news. 140 mile an hour sustained winds, but it's also slowed down. North northeast movement at eight miles an hour. Yesterday it was moving at about 10 miles an hour, and when it was approaching landfall a couple of hours ago, it was about nine miles an hour. So again, the slowing down of this storm means there's still many hours to go for the southwest coast of Florida to really just get hammered with this storm, guys. Yeah, and I, and 
And as we heard officials saying, Aaron is going to last for a while. Thank you very much. In Cuba, by the way, an estimated 11 million people are sitting without power after Hurricane Ian swept across the island nation yesterday. Crews worked through the night to restore power, but it remains unclear how much success they've had so far. You're going to want to stay with CBS 11 as our first alert weather team tracks Hurricane Ian. Our live coverage continues throughout the evening and over the next several days. Be sure to download the CBS DFW weather app for the latest information right at your fingertips.